Hi, thanks for watching 3dmotive.com. This is Justin, and in this video we're going to be covering the rigging of this bipedal creature shown here. This video is intended for intermediate Maya users, though some basic principles will be covered at the start of this course. Here, I will cover the step-by-step -step process of setting up this rig by hand, and we'll cover topics such as joint placement, hierarchy and naming conventions, joint orientation, building the skeleton for IKFK switching, building and setting up control handles, set-driven or expression-based attribute controls, creating a reverse foot setup, painting skin weights, and in the bonus section, dynamic hair-driven joint chains. So you can actually build, let's say, a tail or get this guy's cloth moving dynamically once you actually begin to animate this character. So, thanks for watching, and let's go ahead and get started. In this section, we're going to do a quick overview of some basic principles and tools that we will be using throughout this course including building parent-child relationships between objects, creating and resizing joints, joint orientation, understanding the outliner and hypergraph, creating some simple control handles, set-driven keys and expression-based attributes, and at the end of this section, a brief introduction into skinning, which we will get into deeper towards the end of this course. Okay. So at the root of all things rig-related is the understanding of parent-child relationships between objects and how these relationships can be formed and broken using various methods inside Maya. In this first example, I'm going to show you how to create a parent-child relationship between multiple objects. First, let's create a cube and a sphere. Zoom in on these here. You can zoom in on these easily just by hitting the F key. I'm going to move these off to the side of one another. And I'm also going to hit 5 to go into shaded mode. So what we see we have here are two different objects that are completely independent of one another. Creating a parent-child relationship is as simple as selecting the child or the object that you want to be the child, selecting the sphere, and then either hitting the letter P or going up to the edit menu and selecting parent. What you'll see is now the child can still move independently but when you move the parent the child is forced to come along. Now let's say we wanted to break this connection. In order to do this all we have to do is select the child and either hit shift P or under the edit menu select unparent and what we will now see is again the child moves independent and when you move the cube that moves independent and the sphere child does not follow. In Maya there are multiple ways of parenting one object to another. In the example just given you saw the most basic way to create a child-parent relationship. In this example, I'm going to show you how to create the same connection, but through the use of constraints. One thing to keep in mind, though, is when you're dealing with constraints, as opposed to straight parenting, the selection order reverses. So instead of selecting the child first, as we did in the previous example, when dealing with constraints, it's important to know that you select the parent first. So let's say that we wanted to recreate the previous example, but this time through the use of constraints. If we look here, if we still want the sphere to be the child and the cube to be the parent, again, like I said, when adding a constraint, we need to make sure that the parent is selected first, then we shift select the sphere or the child, and then under the constraint menu, we're going to select parent. What we'll see is that on the child object now, we have a bunch of blue fields in the translate and rotate channels. This usually indicates that we have some sort of incoming parent constraint or maybe a point constraint or orient constraint, both of which I'll be going over in a second. But when we select the cube or the parent object here, we'll see that this now has a parent-child relationship between the sphere. Yet, when I select a sphere, I can still move this independently as I did in the previous example. Now, 
let's say like in the previous example we wanted to break this connection between the child and the parent instead of going up to edit on parent now that we're dealing with child parent relationships through the use of constraints what we need to do is we need to break the connection and we can do that by selecting the fields that we want to have broken right click and down here we can select break connections this will return your fields to their default colors and what you'll see now is we're allowed to move the sphere independently as we were before since it was the child but if we select the parent and go to move that this is now independent as well and the sphere as the child no longer follows because that constraint has been broken Maya also has a few other methods of constraining objects to one another let's say that you only want to constrain the translation channels of one object to another first we'll select the parent and then the child and under the constraint menu instead of choosing parent because that will constrain both the translation and the rotation channels what we're gonna do is just select point and we'll see that we can have only the blue fields here that are in the translate channels indicating that that's where the constraints lie so if we go in here and we translate the parent now we'll see that the child follows but if we rotate the parent we'll see that the child does nothing again in order to break this connection just go over here select the fields that you want to have broken right click and select break connections now let's say that we only wanted the rotation channels to be constrained we can do that by selecting the sphere or I'm sorry selecting the cube selecting the child going to constraint and in this case we're going to use the orient constraint that will constrain all the rotation channels for both or I'm sorry the rotation channels for both objects so here again if we select the parent it doesn't move yet if we rotate we'll see I'm going to actually zoom in a little bit better here and turn on this wireframe on shaded by clicking this icon right here at the top of the viewport. We'll see that when I rotate the cube, the child will rotate or the sphere will rotate. Again, to break this connection, simply select these channels, right click, and select break connections. one of the nice things about parent constraints as opposed to regular parenting or I suppose I should say constraints in general is that you can actually set a weight value that controls how much influence the parent has over the child and you're even able to have multiple parent constraints on one child object and animate the weight influence between them let me start a new scene here and I'll show you in the following example so what we're gonna do in this example is we're gonna create a two cubes and one sphere Let me zoom in here by hitting the F key I'm gonna select both spheres I'm just gonna kinda move them I'm gonna put one here at five and the other here at negative five so what we're gonna do is we're going to add two parent constraints to this sphere right here. We're going to add one here from P cube 2 and we're going to add another from P cube 1. So as we saw in the previous example in order to do that we have our parent selected, we're going to select our sphere, and under constraint we're going to add a parent constraint. We're also going to do the same thing over here with P cube 2 so we're going to select the cube we're going to select the sphere and we can either go to constrain and select parent again or we can just hit the letter G and that will redo the previous command now that we have two parent constraints assigned to one child object when I go to move one parent what we'll notice 
is that the child doesn't exactly fall at a one-to-one -one ratio. The reason for this is because if we look at the child object down here in the channel box, we see that under parent constraint, we have a constraint from P cube 1 and P cube 2, both of which are set at 1. This means that there is an equal constraint between both cubes right now. Let's say that we wanted the sphere to follow the cube at a 1 to 1 ratio. We're going to select P cube 2, I'm sorry, we're going to select a child, and let's say we wanted it to follow P cube 2. We're going to take the weight for P cube 1 and set that to 0. What that'll do is that'll make sure that it follows P cube 2 at a 1 to 1 ratio. Because basically we haven't, we haven't disconnected P cube 1 from the sphere here. We've just turned the weight to 0 so it has no influence over it. Now let's say that we wanted to change it so that cube 1 was at a weight of 1. You'll see that there was an adjustment made right here. And then if we turn to cube 2 and turn that to 0, we'll see it makes another adjustment because first when we had them back at 1, there was an even distribution of its weight. Now that we have P cube 2 set to weight, weight to 0 and we move P cube 1, we'll see that that follows at a 1 to 1 ratio. This may not make much sense now, or it may not seem incredibly useful, but it is very, very helpful and is very important later on when we actually start to build our IKFK switching on our skeleton. Next, we're going to cover some of Maya's scene management tools. Maya has multiple ways of managing objects, geometry, and other nodes within your scene. The first of the two is the outliner, which displays objects in a hierarchical fashion. You can access the outliner by going to Window, Outliner. So I'm going to show you a few simple things that we can do inside the outliner here. Let's go ahead and create a cube. Move this up here and create a sphere. Now what you see is we have these objects right now are independent of one another and we can select them by just clicking on them here in the outliner. Let's say we wanted to rename these objects. The easy way to rename these is you can just go into the channel box here and you can click on this field and rename it. But let's say you're working in the outliner and you want to rename an object here. All you have to do is double click the name and it will allow you to rename this object. So in this case, let's rename it to my cube. And let's go ahead and rename the sphere as well. Just double click on it. Just type my sphere. And now we have both of these objects we renamed. You can see that they're also renamed here in the channel box as well. So let's say we wanted to create a parent-child relationship. Typically what you would do is we'd select the child first, let's say in this case the sphere, then shift select the parent and hit P. What you'll see is under the outliner now there's this rollout here and when you roll it out it'll show you all of the children under this cube object which right here is my sphere because we now have that parent-child relationship that we just created. So let me undo this by selecting the child and hitting shift P and you'll see that these are now two independent objects again. Now let's say we wanted to create that same connection but in the outliner instead. The easiest way to do that is to just select my sphere with the middle mouse button, hold the middle mouse button down and drag it onto the object that you want to be the parent. In this case, we're just going to use the cube. What you'll see is that created the same rollout and the same parent-child relationship. So if I select the cube here or select it in the viewport, it now has that same relationship. If I wanted to unparent these, this sphere from the cube, that's as simple as middle mouse clicking on the sphere or the child object that you want to unparent and just dragging that to let's say a blank field. Basically you don't want to have it selected on other objects because then it's going to try and make it the child of whatever object you have selected. So in this case we're just going to select this open field here down at the bottom and you'll see that these are now two independent objects again. Next we're going to explore the second of the two scene management editors in Maya which is the hypergraph. Like the outliner 
The hypergraph displays a hierarchy of nodes that represent the relationships of objects in your scene. You can access the hypergraph by going to Window and selecting Hypergraph. Let me go ahead and close down the outliner here. One of the main differences with the hypergraph is the ability to graph all incoming and outgoing connections from a single object. Simple objects, such as geometry, don't really have that many nodes connecting to it. But once we get more into a rig in a bit here, you'll see that the complexity can begin to expand fairly quickly. We don't necessarily need to get into that now, so let me just show you a few simple things that we can do inside the hypergraph here. Navigation inside the hypergraph is pretty much identical to how you navigate inside the Maya viewport. If you hold down Alt with the middle mouse button, you can pan around, and with the right mouse button, you can zoom in and out. The left mouse button won't arc rotate, obviously, because this is just a 2D plane that we're looking at. For To rename an object here in the hypergraph, instead of double clicking like you would in the outliner or just clicking in this field of the channel box here once, you have to hold Control and double click on the object. We'll just rename this new cube name and hit enter. And if we want to rename the sphere, just hold Control, double click, and we'll rename this new sphere name. Now creating the parent-child relationships like we did inside the outliner are exactly the same in the hypergraph. If we wanted to make the sphere the child of the cube, all we have to do is middle mouse click and hold down and drag it on top of the cube or any object that you want it to be the parent. Now you'll see I can move around here and I have both of these objects connected. If I wanted to break the connection, same thing as with the outliner, just middle mouse drag to an empty space and both of these objects are independent once again. Well that's a quick overview of Maya scene management tools. Let's go ahead and move on to joint creation.